Hello, this is Coach Tim Campbell, and I'm your host for the Self Made as a Myth, Make a Difference Together show, where we're talking with successful business owners to hear their stories of building their business. And because we know that achieving success is not something that we can do on our own, we are acknowledging the people and recognizing those folks who have helped us along the journey of the successes that we have achieved and, and helped us to excel in our business. Today, I'm excited to have a fellow business owner from Indiana with us today. My guest has been dog sledding in Alaska. We will definitely want to hear about that. She enjoys spending time with her grandchildren, and she's most proud of her three amazing children that she raised as a single mother. Congratulations. That is amazing. It is my pleasure to welcome Denise to the show today. Hey, Denise, how are you doing? Hey, Tim. I'm great. How about you? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for asking. So, hey, let's have you start by introducing yourself and uh, tell us a little bit of your personal story, where you were born, where you live about your family and things like that absolutely so i was born in indianapolis uh so and i've been here all my life i have not left and people ask me why haven't you left and i said well everybody i love is here so where would i go right <laughs> I like so that, that yeah. is why i am born and bred in indianapolis I was born here stayed here um oldest of four kids and uh raised by mom and dad that where my mom was a secretary my dad was a warehouse worker so a bit of a blue collar upbringing and uh, was raised in that way. Um, married and divorced, but from that marriage have three amazing children. Uh, I have a daughter. I have two sons. They are all in their 40s, all have their own very successful careers. And from those three amazing children, I have four even more amazing grandchildren that I <laughs> absolutely love spending time with. Um, so I started out my business experience, as I think a lot of people do, by working in different companies. I have a bit of an accounting background. So I worked for insurance companies. I worked for a CPA firm. And then uh, 25 years ago, started my first business. Wonderful. So Denise, is there a funny story that your family likes to tell about you that you'd be willing to share with us today? Uh, my cooking. My cooking is a continual joke. Um, Several years ago, I cut up some tomatoes and put them in a salad and I left the stickers on the tomatoes and <laughs> they love whenever we have salad now, it's like, mom, did you take the stickers off the tomatoes? And so my cookie, I'm not a great cook. I'm good at a lot of things. Cooking is not it. <laughs> I can't even cut a tomato properly, obviously. So that, that's the funny story they like to talk. About. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. So. Um, tell us how the business came about, Denise. At what point did you, you know, have the confidence that you could run your own business? Uh, well, I actually have two businesses. So the first one I started 25 years ago, and I started that because someone that I was working with uh, in the property tax business decided he was going to shut his business down, and he he gave me three of our top clients and he told me to go start my own business because I'd been spending my time helping other people build mm -hmm. their business. And so he said, go start your own business and stop helping other people make money, make it for yourself. Oh, so that is where I started. Now, did I have confidence at that level? Absolutely not. <laughs> I did <laughs> not. Um, but, um, but I gained confidence and I will tell you how I gained confidence is by being around other business people. And uh, so I joined a group, a BNI, a referral marketing group. Um, and, and one of the reasons why I joined, well, the only reason I joined really was not for referrals, but because there were other business people there. And I knew I had a lot to learn. Mm. So that's when I started to gain confidence in that business and then developed a referral generating system through that business that I now share with others in another business that I started 10 years ago called Whiteboard Learning. But really my first foray into business, I was terrified uh, I was lucky enough that my mentor, Dale, set me off on the path to be an entrepreneur, but it took me really being around other business people, seeing how they operate, and I'm really big on modeling success. So as I have grown all the way from a child up to where I am right now, I watch successful people, I watch people that I admire, and I model their behaviors, and um, I think that has led to a lot of my success and a lot of my learning as well. Awesome. So tell us a little bit more about uh, Whiteboard Learning and, and how, how you help folks, what, what you do, and, and uh, how people can figure out if it's something that's right for them. 
Oh, thank you for that. So Whiteboard Learning is a company where we help you stop hunting for clients and spend more time helping your clients. And we do that by teaching you a referral generating system for your business. Everybody says they want referrals, but nobody takes the time to get referrals and they really don't know how. And they're very uncomfortable asking for referrals. So what I put together is a 12-week program where I teach referral generating system to business owners, salespeople, and I take them through the whole process of how to start out by figuring out how to teach other people to get your referrals, how to dig into the network that you already have, how to do strategic networking. And so at the end of the 12 weeks, they have a written referral marketing plan that they can implement in their business. Fantastic. And um, how can people find out about that or learn more about it and, and connect with you? Well, you can go to, I have a Facebook group that uh, I have a lot of business people in there. It's a private group. It's called Roadmap to Unlimited Referrals. I do a lot of free referral training in there. If um, one of the business people are in there has a question, they just throw it out to the group. The group answers it. So it's a great group of small business people where I do the training, but then also they help each other as well. Awesome. Fantastic. So Denise, um, share a story where someone pushed you or inspired you that you could do it. Um, even though you might not have thought that you could and the impact that that had on you? I would have to go back to uh, Dale Armbruster is his name. And I had did, had helped a couple of companies start their own property tax consulting business. And he was the third person that I had worked with and helped them start their business. And he, he I'm so grateful that he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Let's just say it that way. <laughs> like I said, I was raised kind of by the blue collar parents. I did not go to college. Um, in, in the world that I was raised in, you got married and had kids, which is what I did. And then you took a job. And that's just what you did for all of your life. And you hope that you got a really good pension at the end of it. He was such an entrepreneur. He was so, his thinking to me was so out of the box. And he started out with just, um, the first thing he did with me was, we're going to set your personal and professional goals for the year. Mm. And I was like, what? I, nobody ever had me set any kind of a goal like that before. So he really, uh, he was really good about giving me training and education. So he introduced me to Tony Robbins trainings, mm -hmm. and uh, which I just ate up. I love them. And so I learned goal setting. And so he inspired me to set a personal professional goal. We set quarterly benchmarks. And if I hit the quarterly benchmark for my personal and my professional goal, I get a bonus. Nice. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <This is amazing." laughs> but he that's how he that's how he started out. He became an amazing mentor to me in many ways. That's the first thing that he started with was teaching me how to set goals mm -hmm. and then to set those quarterly benchmarks to go with them. Awesome. So Denise, over the years, what's the biggest learning that you've had as a big business owner? Uh, flexibility. Mm -hmm. flexibility would definitely be it. I am, I'm a kind of a go from point A to point B kind of person. And that's just a straight line. And <laughs> this doesn't really work <laughs> when you own your own business, <laughs> when you're an entrepreneur. So the thing that I think I've had to learn the most about over the past few years as a business owner is how to be flexible and go with the flow a little bit more. Yeah. And, and um, to your point, it's not always an easy thing, but definitely a, a required skill to have um, as life changes quite frequently in the in the business world. Right. It does. And then our whole world has changed over the past couple of years. So I'm so grateful that I learned that skill so that I was able to kind of move and do the things I needed to do over the past few years of all the uncertainty that we've had. Yeah. Um, one of the things that <clears throat> that we talk with our clients about is just the, the the general desire that everybody has to stay within their comfort zone, right? And and we we like knowing what tomorrow is going to look like and having that predictability, but but uh, but also everything that we want out of life and 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 particularly everything we want out of our business is is generally on the other side of our comfort zone, right? <laughs> so that's absolutely right. I'd love to wrap up in my little comfort zone every day, but you know what? You're right. Pushing out of the comfort zone is, is the key. And it's what helps you learn flexibility so that you can adapt and adjust to things as they come your way. So we know that business success doesn't happen in isolation. Um, so uh, Denise, tell us about a, one of your biggest challenges that you've had over the years and a, a fellow business owner who 
you know, came alongside you and helped you get through that? Asking for help. That has been, and again, I see this with other business people too. Um, we don't want to ask for help. We don't want to show our vulnerabilities. We don't want to show people that we don't know some things. Mm. And so asking for help has been my biggest struggle. I found a, a business coach early on, uh, Missy Shopshire, and uh, she has really helped me feel comfortable with that and really coached me through that. Yeah. So I would say asking for help was one of my biggest challenges. And I'm grateful for Missy that I found her and that she was able to coach me through that process. So I feel very comfortable now asking people for help and showing the vulnerability of not knowing certain things. And that's okay. Yeah, there's um, there's a it's almost like a, an unwritten rule right? with within the small business owner community that we've got to got to have it all together. We can't show our, our weaknesses and our vulnerabilities. Because, um, and as I've dug into that with more and more folks, what has come to the surface is a lot of folks just assume that they're the only one struggling right? and that everybody yeah. else has got it together. And so I can't share that I'm struggling because you know, everybody else has figured it out and I don't want to be the only one that has it. And then you start to peel back that onion, right? And and sh and bring people together in community, and they're like, "Oh, nobody's got this thing figured out. We're just all doing the best we can." <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. And you know, it, it attracts more to you because you are willing to say, "No, I don't know everything." It's. I think when you're like, "I I've got everything I need. I'm good," and it doesn't attract people to you. It, it almost repels people from you. So when you're willing to open up and say, I don't know this, I don't understand this, I could use some help with this, I think it really attracts more people to you. That is so true. Yes. Because uh, it, it's almost like the, the idea of, you know, misery likes company, right? Like, oh, you're going to be willing to be vulnerable and share. Oh, thank goodness. Me too. <laughs> That's why I love mastermind groups so much. But to me, a mastermind group is a people, a group of people who trust each other mm. and they're willing to be open to be vulnerable and then help each other as well. So I'm I'm a big proponent of mastermind groups, and I think every business owner should have their own mastermind group that they belong to. And you mentioned BNI earlier. I mean, that it's not a mastermind, but that does certainly happen within that group as well, right? Especially within you know the one-on-one -on -one meetings that we have outside of the, the general meetings. Yes, it absolutely does. That is really where I started with understanding that I wasn't alone out there, that there were other business people had, first of all, other services that I could use, but also we have the same struggles. That we have. Yeah. So Denise, if, if I asked you to pick three people in your business journey mm -hmm. that you're most grateful for being there for you and helping with you achieving the, the growth that you've had, who are those three people and how'd they help you? Well, I would say for sure, Dale Armbruster. Um, he, he was just amazing to me and just showed me so many different things and opened up such a big world to me to make me believe that I could be the business owner instead of kind of hiding behind in the background. Yeah. Um, and he really helped me believe that. And again, it started off with goals and he exposed me to Tony Robbins trainings and just so much. He was always so willing to give me the space that I needed and the opportunities that I needed to grow as a person and as a business person. So he for sure would be one of them. I think the second one would be my dad. And my dad, uh, he always had something going on uh, when it came to business. Uh, he worked full-time jobs, but he also got laid off a lot. Mm. And so uh, he would start like little businesses. Like he wasn't above pushing a lawnmower and cutting people's grass. Mm. He got a paper route one time um, because he wanted to bring income into the household. But my dad also taught me a really strong work ethic. Mm. Um, so I think he is someone that has been a big influence. And plus, unfortunately, I lost him last September. Awesome. He was one of my biggest cheerleaders. Aww. He just was one of my biggest cheerleaders. It was like, you can do this. And I always called him with my business successes. So um, I think dad was definitely one of them. And then um, I would also say my grandmother. My grandmother uh, was a single mom when it wasn't cool to be a single mom back mm -hmm. in the day. She never drove. But she went into um, the finance center, which is on what used to be Fort Benjamin Harrison here. And she started in the typing pool there. And by the time she retired at 71, she was the manager and the supervisor of the whole retired pay division. Oh, wow. 
200 employees. And she would, she got a, she called it her ride. So she would stand out each morning with her purse on her arm, standing up straight, head held high, shoulders back. And her ride would pick her up and take her to work. And then she would bring her back. And she was always very respectful of the fact that someone was giving her a ride. But she just slowly worked her way up from the typing pool into supervising 200 people. And I just always had the most respect and admiration for my friend. Oh, that is so wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Um, if, if you think about the next three to five years, Denise, what are the biggest challenges that you see in front of you in terms of, you know, between you and, and, and achieving your goals? And who are the types of people that you're going to need to to be in your life and in your business to help you overcome those challenges? That is a really good question. I would say I'm probably in a different spot than a lot of business owners are. So I had property tax business, 25 years old in June, uh, and I grew it, had employees, office space, lots of awards, which I'm very thankful and grateful for, and then decided that I wanted to take it back down a little bit and start whiteboard learning. So as I've gotten older, and this is kind of my second phase of, of having a business, my biggest challenge each day that I think about is how much or how little do I want to scale the business? Mm. So when it came to the property tax business, I let a lot of other people outside influences tell me how I should grow it and that I should grow it and that I need this and that, which was all fantastic and fine. But now that I've done that, really with this business right now, um, my, my challenge every day is how much do I want to scale the business or how much do I not want to scale the business? Sure. And I, again, have people pushing me, grow, get employees. And it, um, so right now, that is my biggest challenge is really where do I want this business to go? Yeah. So I would say that's my biggest challenge. Um, the people who keep me grounded, I again, would be this business mastermind group. It's a women's professional mastermind group. And when I get in there and I have crazy ideas, they're like, whoa, 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 that is not what you said that you wanted. So um, <laughs> I'm very grateful that they are more than willing to tell me when they think I'm off track. So I would say my biggest challenge right now with my business is how large do I actually want to scale the business or do I just want to keep it where it is? Yeah, yeah. It, that kind of goes back to, I think, what your mentor taught you in terms of setting goals and then working towards the goal. So I'm hearing it's, there's a little bit of work of just figuring out what is the goal that you want to set because you'll, you'll be able to hit it because you've proven time and again that you can, but you know, just some soul searching of what, what do you actually want your business to look like in, in three to five years? Yeah. That's exactly right. I intend to absolutely still be in business in three to five years, but will it be with employees? It, will it be with an office space? I don't know yet. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a cool thing to be able to be pondering, right? To have the flexibility to, 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 to have the choices of, do I want to or don't I? Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So Jim Rohn, one of my favorite authors, a uh, quote that I, I just really fell in love with is, we become the average of the five people that we spend the most time with. So as you think about that, Denise, is that something that's exciting, something that makes you nervous? Where, where does that fit in in terms of your business philosophy? Oh, exciting. I think it's so exciting. It's, um, yeah, through the phases of my life, I've had five people in and out all the different um, different phases of my life. But I think that is just such an exciting opportunity uh, to be around people that encourage you and want you to grow. Because we've all had those people that are like, don't do it. You can't do it. Actually, my mom was like that when I started my first business. I remember we were sitting at a big Mother's Day uh, lunch and I said, guess what, you guys, I'm going to start my own business. And here was my mother's response. That's nice. Here. And it was just, <laughs> she always was like, be safe, be safe. And my dad was like, go, 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 go. Yeah. So I think um, it, it is, I'm very excited about all the opportunities of all the different amazing people that you can be surrounded by, but you do have to be careful to make sure that you have people that you're surrounded by that. Uh, understand you and can encourage the goals that you have set for yourself. Yes, absolutely. I, I love the story about your mom and dad. So uh, I do um, disc assessments a lot with folks and, and uh, a lot of uh, companies that have a couple running the business. Um, it always reinforces that, that cliche term of opposites attract. 
right? So it sounds like mom and dad were, were had a little bit of that, which, which is actually awesome because right, we, we need our opposite to ground us sometimes and, and help us see perspectives that we can't see for ourselves. So having those different perspectives from mom and dad probably was very helpful in terms of you know, starting your own business and having the conservative side and the more aggressive perspective in that. It was. I learned great things from both of them. Yes. Awesome. So um, last question here, Denise, if there was something catastrophic that happened in the business today, who's the first person you'd call and what would that conversation be? Um, I have a really good friend. His name is Mike. And um, he's been in business himself for a really long time. He is retired now, but he always is a great person for me to just ground myself with. Um, he's a great listener, so he'll listen and not just give me a lot of advice. He'll listen to what's going on, and then he settles me down, and um, and then we figure it out. That's awesome. So yeah. I would call my friend Mike. He's been a great, I would say, almost a mentor to me as well. Wonderful. What's Mike's last name? His last name is DeSloper. That's wonderful. So you've been blessed with a lot of uh, incredible people who sounds like, you know, have helped you a ton throughout your journey. If they were all on the show here today, what would you like to say to them? Oh my gosh. Um, I can't thank them enough. Can't, you know, at the time, some of them, particularly my parents, um, you don't understand why they're, they're saying the things <laughs> to you they are, or doing the things that they're doing. And you don't always agree with it. Even with, with some of my coaches and mentors as well, it's like, no, I don't want to do that. Yep. Um, I would thank them so much for the things that they taught me, pushing me out of my comfort zone and believing in me when I didn't believe in myself. Awesome. So wonderful. Um, that is just incredible when we think about um, you know, people who don't even necessarily know the impact that they've had on us, right? And um, and vice versa, right? The impact that we have on others. And so one, one of the you know, things that I want to make sure that we do with this show is that we not only do we recognize them on this video, but then we also you know, invite them to watch the, the video and, and have them hear how you spoke about them. Right? And so we'll, we'll make sure to, to connect them to this and, and have them you know, listen to the way that you've you know, recognized them in this video and, and the impact that they've had in your life. Thank you. I think that's a fantastic idea. I love the concept of this podcast. Oh, thank you. So Denise, it's been a, a real pleasure having you uh, on the show today and hearing your insights and, and uh, learning about the people who have helped to, you to build two successful businesses. So thanks again for your time to be on the show. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. You are very welcome. To everyone who tuned in, thanks for listening to the Self Made is a Myth show with your host, Coach Tim Campbell. Be sure to help us spread this movement by liking us and posting about us on social media. To join our movement, go to bemadtogether.com. All right, folks, that's a wrap. Make sure to pay it forward, and we'll see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>